Hello everyone, I am Dr. Win Tran from VietMD.net and welcome to Medical Speaking Medication Module. Well, in this module, we're talking about medication error. Well, in your daily practice as a provider, you ultimately you give your patients some type of interventions, most commonly medications. Right along the line, many things can happen and can make a mistake or an error. The moment you give your patient a prescription, either writing or electronically, um, the patient bring that or send that to a pharmacy. The pharmacy verify the order and then dispense the medication. Then give to your patients. The patient take the medication and then go home and then take the medications. Along the line, many things can happen, right? You can give a wrong dose, you can give a wrong name, the pharmacy uh, may dispense a wrong medications. It's very unlikely, uh, and then the patient may take the wrong medication, wrong dose, or wrong time. So we will talk about that at the end of this lecture. But I'd like to tell you, this is so common, okay? This is so common. So what is a medication error? A medication error is any preventable event that can cause or lead to inappropriate medication use or patient harm. Remember, this is preventable. So as a provider, your communication skill will help and will prevent or even reduce the risk of medication error. All right, so you think about it. How many people die per year because of medical errors? And remember, medication error is a prof medical error. Well, in the US, it's estimated 50,000 50, people die a year because of medical error. Medication error is a part of that and play a big um, part. Now, one thing I'd like to tell you is um, why it happened. I mentioned earlier, the order was wrong, poor communication. Remember, poor communication is one of the key factors may increase risk in medication error. Poor handwritings, you see a lot of doctors have excellent handwriting. I have no idea what he or she writing. And then missing medication, mislabel, incorrect. A lot of patients, they have taking medication we call polypharmacy. This has happened a lot in nursing home. One patient take about 10 or 20 medication a day. Can you imagine if you have that 20 medication in your hand and try to take it? Absolutely horrible you will forget something or you cannot take it. So this is some common mistake that people may have and I see that happen all the time. So how do you classify medication errors? Well, they classify from A, B, C, D to I. So A is a very mild one. So, and B is something happened but did not reach to the patient yet. C, the medication error had reached the patient but did not, cause, did not cause harm. And then D is patient monitoring required to, de, to be determined whether the harm already happened. And they keep going until I, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And I level is the highest one patient when the medication error can contribute to patient death. Uh, it, it unlikely happened, but it still happened. Now, just want to give you an example when we talk about polypharmacy in nursing home. A lot of people, especially elderly, in nursing home, they expose to high risk of medication error. Well, several studies have been shown that there's a lot, it's happened that up to 1% to 2% or some incident up to 5%. This has happened so true in antipsychosis, antidepressant, sedated, hypnotics, and anticoagulants because those medications are very common and used so many times and for every least in nursing home they either they miss or they was um, disband or they, as I said many things can happen and this when the medication even happen. Now um, um, some rates in nursing home I mentioned only up to 12% but in, on average 1 to 5% is the common one. So how would you uh, reduce in this class, we talk about communication. So in this module, I like you to focus a lot on just one thing, 
speak clearly to your patient. You don't have to go really fast, you don't have to go extremely low, but you just tell patient the name of the medication clearly and ask and teach back method. For example, Mrs. Smith, I'm going to give you a medication called metformin. And then you ask patient, can you name, can you get, tell me the name again? And what this medication usually to treat your diabetes? Well, and then those are the side effects. Can you tell me what are the side effects? And how should you, or how, how, how often you should take this medication? Another one example is if you take antibiotic, remember this is so common in Vietnam. When you give an antibiotic, Two things, the start day and the end day. It's very, very rare that someone take antibiotic for life. Okay, so if anyone take antibiotic, I must ask you the start of the day and at the end of the day. For Vietnamese people, you have to do both. You, you must say, oh, you start today, you end it on Friday. You're not stopping tomorrow. You're not stopping too late for today. You must stop exactly five days, seven days, or ten days, or whatever regimen you recommend. So speaking clearly to your patient, instruction, the dose, the name, and ask. You spend a lot of time making the diagnosis, and you spend only 30 seconds to tell the medication, and that will make a difference to someone else's life. Even if you make a great diagnosis, it won't make any difference if you give a wrong medication. Right? So think about it. All right. So now, um, in this class, I like to uh, make sure that you guys practice a five R for medication. And this has happened in the U.S. when nurse come to the uh, see this patient, but make sure the right patient. Uh, you double check. Of course, this is your patient, but you don't know whether patient sister or patient brother take this medication, especially with pain medication. So make sure the right patient, right time, right frequency. If you give the patient, make sure that uh, so it's one time a day, two times a day, or three times. And if it's three times a day, remember TID different than from Q8. TID means patient can be given medication three times a day, usually while they are awake, versus Q8, you mean schedule exactly every eight hour. You wake the patient up, and then you give medications. So make sure you write the patient frequency clearly so the pharmacist or the patient or whoever gives the patient medication, they understand. And then the right dose. Remember, the dose is so important. A lot of medication, you can kill somebody with just a dose. Coumadin or warfarin is one example. This is very common anticoagulant medication. You give a dose that's not appropriate and you don't monitor the iodine level, you can make sure it bleed to death. So the dose is so important. And then rate route. Make sure the patient take either orally, IV, sub tongue, okay, sublingual, put under the tongue, they swallow, or they apply to the skin. Those can make a di big difference. Make sure the patient understand how to use that. And of course, the last thing is the right drug. A lot of medication, they may have similar names, so when you, as a provider, tell the patient name, make sure that they can distinguish or after they can spell out the name. Okay, I usually give my patient two names, a generic name and a brand name. So even if, even if they forget one, they, they will find familiar over time. Uh, and then you will find surprisingly when they travel across the globe, uh, internationally, uh, the generic name remain the main one. but the brand name sometimes they change from country to country. All right, so um, in this module, we're talking about medication error and how you, a provider, can help decrease the risk. And I tell you, this is one of the key module in our class. We spend a lot of time to teach you how to speak to a patient, and this is the crucial part that you can make a difference, okay? So the assignment for this class is we post several cases online and in different scenarios, you a provider will explain to the patient a medication use and what the side effect. You don't have to be the expert, you don't have to be a pharmacist, but at least teach back, tell the patient what the name of the medication, ask the patient what they understand about this medication and side effect and 
make sure the patient understand your instruction. Ok, so um, trong cái module này các bạn nhớ là đây là một trong những kỹ năng cực kỳ quan trọng của bác sĩ kỹ năng giao tiếp với bệnh nhân mà nói về thuốc bạn là bác sĩ tuyệt vời chứng đoán bệnh y như thần biết chính xác bệnh nhân bị bệnh gì nhưng mà ở giai đoạn cuối cùng bạn cho bệnh cho thuốc nhưng bệnh nhân không có biết cách uống hoặc là uống sai thì tất cả trên chứng đoán của bạn mọi thứ nó phí hết và bạn có tưởng tượng dành rất là nhiều thời gian để tìm hiểu về bệnh lý dành rất là nhiều thời gian để xét nghiệm máu nhưng mà bạn dành chưa đầy 30 giây thậm chí một phút để nói bệnh nhân về thuốc và đây là cái khâu quan trọng nhất tại vì rất là nhiều bác sĩ quên mất rằng là chỉ cần dành thêm chút xíu thời gian thôi bệnh nhân sẽ hiểu và chỉ cần họ uống thuốc đúng thôi thì cái bệnh của họ sẽ được kiểm soát một số nghiên cứu tại Mỹ cho thấy là hai cho cho tới ba phần trăm bệnh nhân thật sự không hết bệnh hoặc bệnh không giảm là tại vì bệnh nhân không có sử dụng thuốc giống như bác sĩ chỉ định nên quý vị thấy các bạn thấy rồi cái phần trăm đó nó nhiều thế cả nào trong cái môi trường này các các bạn trình bày và nói chuyện với chúng tôi giống như các bạn đang giải thích bệnh um, giải thích về thuốc cho bệnh nhân và chúng tôi hy vọng là các bạn sẽ giải thích một cách chậm kỹ lưỡng và hỏi bệnh nhân là xem họ có hiểu hay không ok và sẽ gặp các bạn trong lớp ok see you in class